Hey guys, Tony here from Tectonic Byte, and this is the Google Pixel 2. I've used it for about two weeks now, and here are my thoughts. So first off the bat, you're going to notice the humongous bezels, and I'm kind of mixed on this because I don't really like it, but I'm kind of used to it because I used the iPhone 6 prior to this phone. But in 2017, phones, especially flagships at this price, should not have bezels because you're paying so much and you're getting humongous bezels, whereas you can get the Galaxy S8 with really thin bezels, the LG G6, the OnePlus 5T, which is coming out soon, and even the iPhone 10. but that's out of this price range. It's personal preference because some might think that it's ugly, but others, maybe they're used to it. The design of the back is really intriguing with the glass top third and the coated aluminum on the majority of the phone. So it feels kind of like plastic, but I know it's made of aluminum and it's definitely grippier than glass, which I really like. The volume rocker and power button are on the right and it took a little getting used to, especially coming from an iPhone, but it's not that bad. There's no headphone jack, but there's, they included a USB-C to headphone jack dongle, which I guess is okay. They're kind of forcing the future down our throats because we don't have the option to use a headphone jack unless we use the dongle. It's kind of inconvenient, especially if you don't have Bluetooth headphones. As said before, the Pixel 2 has a USB-C port on the bottom, and it's definitely the future, as what Marquez Brownlee says. As for the overall design, I have to say that the Pixel 2 feels really good in the hand. Coming from an iPhone, the iPhone felt really thin and just not good in the hand, but the Pixel 2 has much more width and it feels much more ergonomic in the hand. The back also doesn't collect fingerprints that easily, which I like, over the iPhone 8, which is basically a fingerprint magnet. So in terms of specs, the Pixel 2 has the Snapdragon 835 chip, 4GB of RAM, and Android Oreo 8.0. It also comes with 64GB and 128GB for storage models. The Pixel 2 is also water resistant at IP67 rated and it should survive dunks in shallow water but I wouldn't really recommend it. With these specs and smooth software, the Pixel 2 performs flawlessly. Launching apps is incredibly fast and so is every basic task, but playing games is no hiccup at all. When I first set up my phone, I had about 20 apps open trying to log into every account and it actually performed really smoothly. I thought it would probably hiccup all the time and just lag and crash, but it actually didn't do that. I'm really impressed with the Pixel 2 coming from an ex-iPhone user, but I'm probably going to have to switch back to iPhone, especially because of the seamless Apple ecosystem with the Apple Watch, iCloud. The display on the Pixel 2 is a 5-inch 1080p AMOLED display and it has nice colors and doesn't have major issues like the Pixel 2 XL. The Pixel 2 runs Android 8.0 straight out of the box and it runs extremely smoothly. It has stock Android and that's basically a pure version of Android where it isn't bloated by random apps and garbage. This allows the phone to run much smoother because it doesn't have anything in the background to slow it down. The Pixel 2 is the pinnacle of Android devices because of the software which is also why people invest in the Pixel lineup. Pixel 2 additionally gets 3 years of consistent software and security updates and Google Play Protect which works in the background to keep everything secure. On top of that, the Pixel 2 also has an inbuilt security module to ensure security. For the cameras, the Pixel 2 has an 8 megapixel front facing camera and 12 megapixel rear facing camera. Both cameras have the portrait mode function which is incredibly effective at artificially blurring the background and giving a shallower depth of field with just software. So the results I got with this Pixel 2 were astounding. The background becomes really blurry and nice, and it doesn't have a dual camera to do that, which is pretty cool. There isn't that much artifacting around the subject, and it tends to produce really good results. For regular pictures, the results are really sharp and the colors pop out, but not too much. The saturation is enough to not need to edit much, but it's not excessive like the photos Samsung phones produce. The rear-facing camera also has optical image stabilization and electronic image stabilization so results from especially video turn out to be really stabilized. So another cool feature with the Pixel lineup is that you get unlimited storage with Google Photos and it's really cool because you get to store as many photos and videos as you want and since 4K videos take up so much storage now it's essential for smartphones these days. For the speakers there are two front firing speakers and this kind of makes up for the lack of a headphone jack. They get extremely loud and sound clear as well. Here's a sound test. The 
The Pixel 2 has edge sensors on the side, so whenever you activate it, it will activate a program when you squeeze it. You can program it to another app, but it comes preset to launch Google Assistant when you squeeze it. So launching Google Assistant is really useful because you can just ask a quick question whenever you need to. And I'll just try it now. Squeeze. What is the date today? Oh, the Wi-Fi is slow. Sometimes it activates by error because I just put it in my pocket and I accidentally squeeze it. But you can set the strength to activate it um, in the settings. As for battery life on the Pixel 2, I've gotten about a full day of usage with normal use and that includes social media browsing, um, apps, and much more. It charges really fast and it's said to provide 7 hours of charge with just 15 minutes of charging. This is incredibly handy because you can just charge on the go, just bring a cable and just charge at work and you'll be set for the day. There are many small things that I really like about the Google Pixel 2 and that includes the wallpapers because they included so many wallpapers and some of them if you look at it um, they have tiny animations like one it has hot air balloons flying around another one it has um, waves crashing on the shore and I really really appreciate the small things that Google do because it just shows that they pay attention to the details another thing they pay attention to a lot is Google Assistant and I love how they put so many things in Google Assistant such as all the games, all the jokes that it has, all the stories and stuff and it, it's really entertaining to play around with especially if you have no one else to talk to. Unlimited photos with Google Photos is such a handy feature with the Google Pixel 2 because I can take as many pictures as I want, I can take as many 4K videos as I want and I won't have to worry about that pesky no more storage notification. In conclusion, this phone is a really great phone even though it has its gripes like the big bezels. It has tons of useful features like the squeeze feature which some people might think is a gimmick but it can be quite useful. The front facing speakers which I find really useful especially when there's no headphone jack. Portrait mode which I really like. If you don't shoot portraits it's a good feature to have. The rear facing camera and the front facing camera are both really good cameras and uh, the fingerprint sensor on the back is really fast and I enjoy that. So even though the Pixel 2 is ugly, it is a really functional phone and has all the features that an average consumer would need. It doesn't have anything stupid like the stupid notch that the iPhone 10 has or an emojis, nothing gimmicky like that. And this phone is really made for consumers and that's why I really like it. Thank you all so much for watching and if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel. Leave a comment down below on what your thoughts on the Google Pixel 2 are and whether or not you'd buy it.